Welcome to the Santorini of Tunisia, the blue city, Sidi Bou Said. One thing I have yet to try here is something called bambaluni, which is, I think they're just like donuts basically. Oh look, they have this. You want a picture? No. Uh, can I just get one bambaluni? Sugar. Right, let me just pay him, I'll be back. <laughs> oh! Hi! <laughs> one, din one dinner. Yeah. <laughs> Thank you. Shukran. There he is, the man. Okay, check on. Thank you. <laughs> okay, live reaction. Oh, I ate the paper. Very nice. And it was only one, one dinner, which is really cheap. That's like 25p ish. Yeah, 25p. Um, my brother gave me feedback on my first video, which I just released last week, by the way. He was like, you need to have more interactions with people. If you don't interact, no one's going to watch. So, that interaction, that was for you. Hope you enjoyed it. Everywhere you look, you think it can't get more beautiful, and then it does. They obviously sell rugs. Rugs are a big part of Arabian culture, but also just culture in Central Asia, the Middle East. Everything's blue, even the bins are blue. I absolutely love seeing art. I think some of these people are so talented. And like, if I had my own house, I would buy all this stuff and decorate. Like this one in particular, that's just, it's got so much character about it. As you can see, this is a much more touristy area. To some extent, it's reassuring because in Tunis, there was no one. So at least I don't feel like I'm the only tourist in the country, which is somewhat nice. I'm just literally down a side street. I don't know how appropriate this is to be filming because I'm sure these are people's houses, but they're really, really beautiful. There's more markets here and things that they're selling as well. I'm not sure what the price is compared to, to the Medina in Tunis, but I was going to say Tunisia. Okay, so I've got my Moroccan tea and lemon. Let me show you the rest of it. <laughs> It's very busy, very, very busy, but it's also extremely, extremely hot. I don't know if that's wise for me to be having tea, but anyway. Surprisingly, most of the people that are here are Italian or Spanish. There's not that many French people, so everyone I walk past, they keep speaking to me in Italian. I'm like, I just don't speak Italian, sorry. So this is obviously the Mediterranean Sea, unlike Morocco, which I think has the... <laughs> I'm gonna have to think about this Pacific, no, Atlantic Ocean, Atlantic, see, I got that one right. 
um, there's like a foreign trader. You know those trade X people who are like, anyway, he's really preaching. I'm almost convinced. <laughs> it might also be worth just kind of telling you guys, I think I've come to a dead end, <laughs> no, about how I actually got here. This is probably not the best place to speak to you guys, but anyway, you can take the train. The train takes 35 minutes to get here. I took a taxi, which cost me around nine pounds, probably the most expensive way to get here but frankly it was just the most convenient for me. I think the train itself, if you were to go to the station, I had to walk to the other side of the old city and it's just too hot to do that, so it was just more convenient for me. However, it depends, everyone's different. What we'll probably do afterwards is try and go to some of those beaches that you see on the Mediterranean coast, so La Marsa Beach is one of the most famous ones there. So um, we'll do that afterwards, so that's why we'll also get a taxi on the way back. To be honest, it looks like something out of Italy. You've got the buildings which look like Mamma Mia, so you look like, you feel like you're in kind of Santorini, Greece area. But the flowers really remind me of the Amalfi Coast, and if anyone's been to Ravello. It's very nice. It's not as blue as Chef Chauhan. Chef Chauhan, I think, to some extent, takes it over the top in the fact that even their roads are blue. But over here, it's a really, really nice balance. What no one tells you about recording yourself is that when you're walking, you'll always get people who... Like some, someone took a photo, I swear to God, they took a photo of me. <laughs> like, um, I don't know why. Um, or you'll get people who kind of wave or people who say hello. And the funniest thing is when you're not actually recording, but you've got your phone out. And so people think that you're recording. And so they, <laughs> they always wave. And it's like low-key embarrassment for you. But it's quite funny. They're sweet. Oh, bless them. I apologise, by the way, if a lot of these videos are bumpy. As you can probably see, the road is very much cobblestone, like a lot of the old cities and medinas in Morocco, in Tunisia, in Istanbul. So, I'm trying my best to stay stable. It's... oh god. Wow. Underrated. Tunisia is underrated. Big time. That's the beach that I think we'll try and go to afterwards. I am a bit weary though, because obviously I'm by myself. I would have to leave my stuff on the beach in order to go in the water. And I don't know how safe that will be. So obviously just like Chef Shoan, you know, you've got people who are living here in these houses. Probably some of them have got beautiful views of the Mediterranean. If you're watching this and you live here, if you've never heard of Airbnb, you can make a lot of money. <laughs> or if you prefer to stay in your home, that's fine too. I'm not, I'm not telling you to leave. Um, so when I was actually researching coming here, you know, I came, I've come here on a day trip and it took 20 minutes. I'm sorry if I'm out of breath, I'm walking uphill. It's not that far to come on a day trip. However, I was looking to research and to stay here for a night, but for some reason, I just found it very difficult to find good accommodation. But when you walk around, everywhere you see, you see villa, dar, dar, villa, and they all look beautiful inside. So, <laughs> I don't know whether that's because they're all fully booked, because it is European peak season, it's July, so there's all the school holidays, or what, but, yeah, I just found it difficult to stay here, but you can stay here, and it's actually closer to the airport than Tunis city centre is. So, even if you wanted to, you could come here first, and then go to Tunis afterwards. Doors and doors and doors and doors. I think I'm going to change my, I say my house, my mother's house in the UK. I'm just going to implement that door, and she's going to come home one day and be like, Wow, I love it. <laughs> I think it's very easy when you come here as well to just think, oh, this place is just so touristy, there's so many tourists, because they all come in groups. To be honest, if you just start walking and you get lost kind of in the houses and the medinas, you'll find some amazing picture opportunities. So I would just encourage, if you do come here, just get lost, basically. <laughs> I don't mean that as in go away. 
but you know if you get lost then you'll find places which are just nice to take photos but nice to walk down that are just more peaceful very beautiful Okay, I'm now in this kind of museum art gallery house. Um, the entrance fee was five dinar. It's really beautiful. If you come here in the morning, which I did, you will notice about a thousand tourists. Right now it's one o'clock and it's much more quiet, barely anyone in here. So. It's just so much better to come in the afternoon if you do come here. Oh my god, I thought that was... <laughs> I got really scared. Oh, that's nice. Okay, so it's like a kind of museum thing, but also it's just... It's very, very... Do you know, I keep saying this, I use it too much, but I'm going to say aesthetic. It's very aesthetic. You see what I mean? Like, you would expect this kind of thing in Morocco. So obviously to see that here in Tunisia. I think when a lot of people think about Tunisia, this is why I kind of had this issue, even when I told my family oh, I'm going to Tunisia. The questions always come up, is it safe? What is there to do there? And why? And I, I think it's very underrated. And I think alike, unlike its neighbors, Algeria and Libya, Tunisia doesn't have a lot of oil. So I think your tourism contributes. And you know, if you've seen my videos on Cambodia, you know how big I am on kind of tourism and contributing to the society. I think your tourism has a greater impact in Tunisia than it does in Morocco, for example. Or, well, I suppose that doesn't work because I've just mentioned the other two countries. But anyway, you get what I mean. Salaamu Alaikum. Panorama. I'm presuming that means there's a panoramic view. So let's go up and see. Okay. I've never seen so many arched doors as here in Tunisia. Like in all the houses they have it. And I'm not sure. I think people are living here. I'm really not sure actually. Because it did say on the entrance you may be greeted by the family. There is a cup there, so I don't know. Again, I don't know if I mentioned before. I think I did say in one of my videos, actually. Oh, well, okay. So behind me, you'll be able to see kind of sit the city and um, also the city of Tunis. If I then kind of turn around, then this is kind of the city of Sidi Bou Said. You can see the mosque that we saw earlier also in the background. It, yeah, I mean, same kind of vibe as when I was in Tunis. It's very, looks like a very peaceful city. It's very white, very beautiful, very scenic. Um, and again, the rooftops, the fact that you can just go up to the roof. So I'm at the roof of that gallery house right now. So that is something to, that you can do when you're here as well. But it's like the roofs of Chef Chouane. Again, you know, you get to see kind of the whole town or city. So it's just a nice atmosphere, really, really nice atmosphere. To be honest, should you stay in Sidi Bou Said? I don't know. I mean, I, I've kind of been here three hours and I'm about to leave because there's not much to do here. Prices are hiked. When I went to a tea house in Tunis, I paid £2.50 for a, a Moroccan tea or Tunisian tea and a lemonade. Over here it was £4. So, it, you know, it's, it's still affordable. It's not out of range, but it is definitely a price hike compared to Tunis because not many people tend to stay in Tunis very long.
Okay, so food is here. Got Lebanese, classic, shishto, classic. All right, say mashallah, don't give me nazar, yeah? Okay, so we are here at La Marsa, La Marsa, sorry, beach, which is there. Unfortunately, I don't actually have a towel. So I'm going to see if I can go into a supermarket or something. The problem is, is they don't have many shops here. So I'm going to go see if I can buy a towel. Okay, so walking, the sand is really, really hot. Like super, super hot. Nice mosque water. Right, so I've opted to go to the other side of that. The water's quite clear actually, it's really nice. I'm gonna put sunscreen on and then go in. I'm gonna leave my stuff here. Okay guys, so just chilling at the beach. Been here for about an hour, just literally doing nothing. Really nice beaches actually. Um, they're pretty clean. The water is quite clear. Um, and it's a bit cold, but because it's so hot outside, it just doesn't matter. So it's really nice, actually. So we are now done at the beach. Um, the only thing was, when I was actually going to the beach, I was stopped by police. He was wearing normal clothes. So he kind of just was like, hello. And I was like, no, I don't want to buy anything. Um, and then basically they kept kind of shouting at me, wanting my attention, then he started whistling and then the guy with the gun came. So I got a bit of like, oh okay, um, fine. And this guy was wearing a uniform. I don't know why the other guy wasn't, but anyway. Um, and they just wanted to check. As soon as they were like, where are you from? I was like, England. They were like, okay, no problem. They just wanted to check my bag. Um, I suppose it's a good thing, you know, just heightened security. Obviously it was a long time ago that they had an attack at the beach, but you know, they, there's security there, so hopefully that should make people feel safe. So I actually forgot to film an ending to the video. However, um, thank you very much for watching this day trip to Sidi Said and La Marsa Beach. It is also worth noting that there are ancient Roman ruins called Carthage, which are right next to Sidi Said. I didn't go there because it was 40 degrees, it was hot, and the ruins are outside, and it just wasn't something that I was looking to do. However, if you're that kind of Float your boat if you're interested in that and you wanted to add that to your day trip to Sidi Bou Said. It's very much doable within that day frame. So thank you for watching. Hope you enjoyed. Please like, please subscribe and you can follow me on Instagram. Otherwise, I'll see you in the next one.